Hey there and welcome back and in this class we'll be going through the concepts of internal table and what are the advantage of using an internal table over the database table and what are all the operations that can be performed on the internal table. In this class we will not be taking any example program so just sit back and try and understand the concept and logic behind the internal table. So let's dive in. At ground level there are two types of table. One is database table and another one is internal table. Database table are permanent table. They are stored in hard disk of database server. Until and unless the data is deleted, it will remain in the hard disk. At the same time, ABAP programs are loaded and executed by application server. Database server maintains business data, whereas the application server holds the business logic in the form of programs. When a program is executed, it first gets loaded into RAM and then the execution takes place statement by statement, line by line by the application server. At that time, if it requires any business data, then it hits the database table and bring back the required information to the application server and then further execution of the program takes place. These tables that are stored in the RAM are known as internal table. Since these are stored in RAM, these are easily and quickly accessible to perform any type of operation. In comparison to the database table, as they are stored in hard disk, they are also considered as remote tables. Since their access is time consuming due to mechanical header present in the hard drive, which takes some time to read the data from the disk, though it will be in milliseconds or microseconds. But it's still reasonable when matched with accessing data in RAM, which has no moving part. Also, as this database server and application server are connected through a network, so while retrieving the data, it also comes across a situation such as connection failure between the two servers or inadequate availability of bandwidth if multiple users try to access the same database server. This was one of the main reasons why SAP has come up with the concept of an internal table, in which it fetches the data from database server into internal table of application server in one shot which drastically improves the performance as now we are not hitting the database table for every record. These internal tables are present during the execution of the program. As soon as the execution is completed, the internal table is wiped off from the RAM. Since the internal table are stored in the application server and they are quickly accessible, these are also known as local tables. Let's get into the details of how is the execution taking place in the back end. So let us understand this concept with the help of a diagram. So consider this to be the RAM of an application server and on the right hand side to be the database server. And the thing which is linking between these two is called a network which moves the data from one server to another server. So these are all the, you can say a hard disk wherein all the different types of tables are stored. Now, as soon as the program is executed, it first gets loaded into RAM of an application server. And when an ABAP program starts to execute, the first thing that it executes is the declaration. What are all the fields that it would require? So a structure variable gets comes into the picture, which holds only one record. So initially, this structure used to get the data from the database table and would perform certain operations as per the ABAP program. And so it used to work like this record by record, but this was a very time consuming process. And that's the reason SAP has come up with a concept of an internal table, wherein in single shot, the table is picked up from database server into an internal table. And then further processing is done with the help of a structure variable. To process any record in database table or in internal table, one by one, a structure variable is required, which holds the record that is to be processed which is also known as header line or work area. At a time, the processor works on only one record in work area. So it performs the operation and it gives back that record to the internal table. In coming slide, we will see how basically the record is moved from internal table to the structure variable. So to access the data from the internal table, we follow these different eight commands. The first one is append, second one is modify, read table, loop at, sort, delete, describe, and refresh. So we'll be going in depth of each of these statements. How do they get executed in the backend and how is the movement of data takes place? 
So let's take a look at append command. So the syntax is append is underscore data, which is a structure of the data, also known as work area into internal table. So the K4, which is which is present in our internal structure, will be moved to the fourth location when this append statement will get executed. So this is how the structure is moved. And if you look at the site type value, it is set to four because right now it, it is at fourth position. So the site type holds the value of number of record which is being processed. Let's take another example, modify. The modify command is, is used to modify any record present in the table. So modify table IT data into IS data index three. So the third record will get updated with the record which is present in our internal structure. Note that right now the site abix value is three. And if I execute this modify table, the record is moved to third one and from yellow it is turned to blue. Whatever may be the data, the yellow data is overwritten with the blue data. And if you note closely, the data which is present in our internal structure didn't got deleted. So it's just that the copy of IS data is moved to our internal table. So this is how the modify command works. Next one is read table. Its syntax is read table in IT data into internal structure IS data with index one. So we are asking to execute the first record into our structure variable. So right now the site type is blank or some random value. If I execute this statement, this value is moved into our internal structure, our work area, and the site abix is set to one. Let's consider in our program, it further executes some more statements, and then again, a read statement is there. But this time, it is with key field one equal to K3. So here, in our internal table, we have got K3, which is a yellow color, and we'll be reading it to our work area. So if I so this is how it is moved to our work area and the site abix is set to three. So let's take the next command. Next one is loop at command. Loop at is used when you want to perform certain operations on the complete table. So loop at internal table into work area, is underscore data, then certain block of statement and finally end loop. So right now our work area also known as header line is empty. Now initially the first record will be moved to our internal structure and site abix value will be set to one. Then certain block of statements would further get executed and then the next statement will be moved to our work area and site abix would be set to two. And similarly the third one now site abix would be set to third. The fourth one the fifth one and the last one. So basically in loop at statement, so if there are 10 records, the block of statements will get executed 10 times. Let's take another command that is delete command. So delete internal table index four. Right now we know that K4 is at fourth position. Its index is four. So what happens when this delete statement get executed? Okay, we see that fourth index value is deleted and all the subsequent values are moved up in one position. And if you look at the site abix value, it is set as four. And so K9 right now holds the site abix value as four. And if we execute the next statement where delete internal table where field one equal to K10. So the K10 is wiped off. And if it would be having certain more records, they would surely have moved up. So this is how the deletion pattern takes place in a BAP editor in deleting data in an internal table. Describe. So describe statement is used to find the number of records present in our internal table. So describe IT data lines count. So count is a variable that we have declared in our program and which will hold the number of records present in our IT underscore data table. So once this is executed, the count will hold 10 value. There is another way to get the number of records and that is count equal to line and then open parenthesis space IT data space close parenthesis. This would again act as a describe statement. So it will also give us the 
number of record present in our internal table. The last one is the sort command. So sort IT data. If this is the given statement, in this case, it will sort the complete table considering all the characteristics. In this case, customer ID and material ID are the characteristic and key figures are quantity and price. So it will only sort customer ID and material ID and rest of the thing will be kept as it is. Also the priority would be given from left hand side to right hand side, which means customer ID will get sorted and the next one is material ID will get sorted and so on. And by default, since we have not given whether we want to sort in, as in ascending order or descending order, ABAP compiler by default sorts in ascending fashion. Next one is sort IT by internal table by field one. So right now customer ID, which is the field one in this case, that will get sorted. And the other one will be kept as it is. Lastly, we are having, we are sorting internal table by field one and two, that is customer ID and material ID. So the field one, that is customer one will be sorted in ascending fashion and, and material ID would get sorted in descending fashion. So if you see C1, C2 and C7, it's in ascending order. And the next one material ID, for C1 of M1 and M2, M2 would be of higher value. So it is placed above M1. Similarly for C2, M3 and M4, M4 is of higher value. So it's placed first. So likewise, the customer ID sorted in ascending order and material ID in descending order. So in this class, we have gone in depth of what is an internal table? Why do we use an internal table? What are the advantages of using an internal table and what are the commands that we use to perform operations on an internal table? So from the next class, we'll be taking examples to get a more clear picture of it. So that's all for this class. Thanks for watching.